A couple of months ago, I described a crystal set using a pyrite detector. That's a semiconductor type rock that can act as a rectifier and is sensitive enough to hear local broadcast stations. Not as good as a germanium diode, but it was still okay here, even without an audio amplifier attached between the detector and my headphones. This time, I'm going to try Galena. Now, Galena is probably the most famous type of crystal detector. It was used in about 1920s, 1930s, before germanium diodes came about from about the 1940s. And it had a reputation for being quite sensitive, but very touchy. So you had this cat's risker, which was like a coil of wire, and you had to set it lightly on the Galena crystal, and if you had it in the right spot, then it would demodulate AM broadcast signals. Even though Galena detectors are long gone, you can still buy them. They apparently have all these magical properties. Don't know if I believe in them, but I certainly believe in their efficacy as a radio detector. So let's grab a lump and give it a try. This is quite a large lump of Galena doesn't have to be anywhere near this large to work in a radio circuit. I got it on eBay from Just Rockin' It. I think it was about 10 or $11 posted. Here's the little note that came with it, describing the Galena. What it is, it's a natural mineral form of lead sulphide. And it talks a bit about um, its properties and colours. And apparently it's got all these metic physical properties. And it's described as a transformation stone. And it says it assists in countering the, the ill effects of radiation, electromagnetic pollution, long hours in front of the computer. And it's used by healers, and anyway, of course, in the fine print, it says this information is to be used for reference purposes only and does not constitute advice. So, enough of the Galena. Let's put it in a radio and see if it works. When I use the pyrite, this is the assembly I use to hold the crystal, but it's not really good for Galena. Not only is it too small, but you really need a springy contact with the Galena. You don't want to be pressing too hard because that will reduce the performance. So you want a light touch and it's got to be on a sensitive spot. Otherwise you won't get reception. This is my test receiver, a very basic crystal set a variable capacitor, maximum of about three or 400 picofarad. Generally, as a rough rule of thumb, about 300 picofarad and 300 microhenry is about right for a crystal set that starts its tuning range at the bottom end of the AM broadcast band, around 530 kilohertz. In this case, the variable capacitor is a little bit more and the inductance is a little bit less. I just wanted a simple test circuit, so I just made something that didn't require any coil winding. It will be clearer when I show you the circuit later, but there's two inductors here, or RF chokes, and the total is about 200 microhenry and the point in the middle is where the detector is attached. I'll just um, do a close-up. That is soldered to the side of a bottle top found on the side of the road. There's a bit of plastic inside it, so I just scraped that away and sanded it. That provides a little cup for the Galena to sit in. Probably doesn't need to be as big as this, but that's what I had and it seems to work quite well. Now here is a capacitor in series with the antenna. That's really needed if you've got a 
reasonably large antenna. If you've got a smaller antenna, you possibly don't need it. Or another alternative, and that's especially if you had a coil with multiple bindings, is you would tap the antenna further down and that would improve selectivity and mean that you don't need a capacitor here. But anyway, I wanted to make something simple, no coil winding, so I've got the capacitor in series with the antenna. You can experiment with values. If you've got another variable capacitor, you can even put that in. And I was actually even able to select stations with a variable capacitor in series with the antenna, rather than usually the case in parallel with the inductor here. There's many crystal set configurations. I won't go into them here. I've just got screws in, in the board, a bit of wood I found somewhere. There's some wire here that's reasonably stiff. And then there's a spring of thinner wire, enameled copper wire from an old transformer. And that lightly presses on a spot on the galena. So you'd have to move it around like this and might take a bit of time and even a small bump can upset it but provided your antenna is good enough provided there's a station nearby and provided your tuning is set right then you will be able to get this working as a detector here is a one nanofarad disc ceramic capacitor right across the headphones. The radio will work without it, but it gave me a little bit extra volume with it. If you are using a crystal earpiece, then you should also have a resistor of around 100K across the headphone connection. And here, on a tag strip, is a germanium diode. It's a very old type. I think it's an OA81. It's probably about 60 years old, if not more. Modern diodes are you know, much smaller. Anyway, I've provided this that connects to the cup or the bottle top and that connects to the junction of the two coils here. The idea of this is as an alternative, so I can switch the headphones between here and here. That's what this white wire is for and so I can compare the Galena with the germanium diode. And as for the headphones, just some very old high impedance type, around 2000 ohms. If you don't have any like this, then you can use, as I've described in previous videos, a transducer, piezo transducer, with a resistor wired across it. That will work, provided you've got good coupling into your ear and for that you can use a stethoscope which you can buy on eBay or you can use a lower impedance headphone or earphones but you will need a transformer even a power transformer like 240 volt to 12 volt meant to be a power transformer but it will work fine as an audio transformer for a crystal set so that's a basic description here's the circuit so you've got the antenna in series with 47 picofarad. If you're in a country area, then you have a higher value, if that's if signals are weaker, or if you've got a smaller antenna, a higher value. If you've got a, a huge antenna, then maybe even a lower value, especially if you're near lots of stations. That will affect the selectivity, but if your value is too small, then you might not hear anything at all. There's the inductors, total of about 200 microhenry, they're in series and at the junction is the connection to the detector. There's the variable capacitor, you've got an earth there that will really improve reception so don't emit the earth, although if you're in a strong signal area you will hear stations without the earth. There's the one nanofarad and parallel resistor as I described and the headphones. So that's the circuit of the crystal set. Now we'll connect an antenna, an earth, and an audio amplifier. Uh, I don't need an audio amplifier when I'm receiving, but for the purposes of this video, so that you can hear it, I do have the audio amplifier connected. Now we're set up. 
I suggest using the germanium diode first just to prove the crystal set works. Then once you've done that, you can use the Galena detector. So what are those professions that you work with or around your partner or in the same office? Uh, probably um, Western Empire. Okay, here's the strongest station. It's probably about 15 kilometers away. So we'll use that as the test. This is using the germanium detector. Now just move the Galena. There's something. Really good spot there. Well, that's a really good spot here. Let's see if we can tune in some of the other stations. We'll try not to bump the board because that will lose the signal. And I think that's better again. Here's a weaker signal. We'll just go back to the germanium diode and compare reception. And definitely stronger on the germanium diode. The thing you have with the Galena that you don't have with the germanium diode is just the mystery of trying to find a better and better spot. Maybe if you had two cat's whiskers and we're trying to get detection across a smaller part of the surface, maybe you get even better results. So I'll leave that for you to try if you decide to build something like this. Well that was a good spot there. Thank you. 
it might be a good idea to build something where you can vary the pressure on the crystal a bit more easily. Another swap. And back on the germanium diode. Seems to be a little bit louder, but the difference, not so much. So that's been our look at a Galena crystal set. I wouldn't use it as a substitute for a germanium diode. It's too touchy and no more sensitive, but it proves that you can use natural materials to detect radio signals, and yep, they still work, just like they did a century ago. If you want to get the most from low power amateur radio, check out my book, Minimum QRP. It gives you ideas on equipment, antennas, operating and strategy, so you can get the most from low power amateur radio. Find out more on my website, vk3ye.com, or search the title on Amazon.